So my name is Shazeb Siddiqui. I'm also part of the user engagement group. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how you can navigate through NERSC. Um, so for some of you that may be new uh, to NERSC, I will talk about, about some of the services um, that will help you and that you probably would use um, on a regular basis. So for today, we'll talk about how you navigate through IRIS. That's our account um, portal, how you submit a user ticket. Uh, we'll talk about MyNERSC. And, and then we'll like to talk about how you connect to our system. So that's Cori and Perlmutter. Um, so connecting via SSH. So that gives you a terminal access. Uh, we'll talk about how you connect uh, through Jupyter for those of you that are um, uh, interested in using Jupyter. I think that we'll have a talk in the afternoon. Uh, we'll talk about no machine. Uh, that's if you want to have a like a kind of like a virtual desktop, um, so you can run like any GUI applications. And and then we'll talk about our user documentation and then the NERSC homepage. Um, I'm sure that some of you may have already visited the home uh, the page, but we'll just kind of show you like where stuff is. So first, uh, we'll talk about Iris. So if you go on the iris.nurse.gov. Um, you will be prompted with a login banner. And, uh, you know, if you forget your password or your username, uh, you know, you can click on the link and then it would um, guide you on how you can, um, you know, reset password or whatever. So if you click the login button, the next thing you'll, you'll see is um, the institution. So we have um, set up a um, federated identity so you can use the nurse credentials. Uh, or you can add your own institution if it's um, if you belong to one of them. And then you'll be uh, prompted with your username and password. So we we use um, multi-factor authentication. And you know, some time back, you know, there was several supercomputers that got hacked in Europe. Um, and we weren't one of them. And, and it was because, you know, well, we use uh, MFA. So it's like an added security. So not, so if, even if your password gets compromised, you're, the attacker needs to know uh, the one-time uh, passcode, which is on your app. So it, may, it makes it a little bit more secure to actually uh, gain access to uh, the system. So, um, MFA, um, this is something that you can um, uh, get set up. Um, so if you have an Android or like an Apple phone, you can download Google Authenticator on you know, the iTunes or the Google Play. And you can uh, search the MFA um, in our Google doc in our documentation and would we'll kind of guide you on how you um, set up MFA. So in Iris, there is um, this QR code that you have to scan on your phone. And once you scan it, you'll get a, the six digit token that will be, um, that you'll see on your um, phone. And that's your, um, wait, that's your one-time password that you use to log in. So let's see, it's, so this is what it will look like on your app. You'll have this six digit token. Uh, so you put in your MFA token right after the password, and then that will get you into the system. And then this is Iris. So I know that there's been like, you may run into this issue or sometimes you have troubleshoot uh, like accessing the nurse system. Um, sometimes you're not in any nurse project and you can't SSH into the system. And that could be confusing. So if you ever run into this issue where you can't SSH into the system for any reason, one thing you will wanna take a look at is go into Iris and see if your account state is active. And if you're in any uh, project, you should see a check mark. Um, I've seen several times there's some users were in um, projects and then they were removed because of any various reason. Maybe the PI just removed them or um, 
whatever. So you have to be in, in some nurse uh, project. So you can, uh, in your profile, you, you see this um, in your main page and then just make sure that your account is active. Uh, if not, um, you know, you could reach out to us uh, if you need help. So on Iris, uh, you'll see something like this uh, on the main page. Um, you'll see this banner on the top. It will show you on the left-hand side, your name. Uh, it'll give you like your CPU membership, uh, GPU account membership. If you wanna know about job details, the storage, um, the roles is where uh, nurse accounts that you belong to. Um, groups, that's your Unix group membership. Um, so MFA that, you know, what we talked about, if you wanna set up your MFA, you click on the MFA tab and then that will give you the QR code or if you wanna add a new uh, token. So that could be like, for instance, if you get a new phone or something, you, you wanna definitely do that. Uh, go into the MFA and register it. Um, your profile, that's your, your information that you would see, um, all your uh, metadata. And next, um, so another thing that's uh, useful, like so if you go into the roles, uh, you would see what uh, projects you belong into, and then you can click on the project, and then it would navigate into the project. Uh, so, like in this case, M three five zero three, you can take a look in like the details. I'll give you an overview of the project detail, the quota, CFS, storage, all of that stuff. Um, another thing that's helpful to know is if you uh, if you want to know who the PI is, for the reason of Either you want to get get access to a system, you can just, I mean, to a project, you can just reach out to the PI or the PI proxy. Uh, another useful thing in Iris is if you want to change shells for whatever reason, maybe you, you don't like um, the standard like bash, which is the default shell, you can go in and click edit on the server login for the system that you want to change and then just select the shell, save the change, and then just um, wait a few minutes and then your shell should automatically change. Uh, another thing that could be useful, uh, mostly for people that have PI, PI proxy is if you are, uh, if you wanna add somebody uh, to a project, go into the project, let's say I'm gonna pick M3503, click add user, you'll see this um, form and then select the user that you want. You can select the role, and then you can also tweak their CPU and GPU allocation. Okay, next we'll talk about how you submit a user ticket. So um, our help portal, uh, that's what we used to, um, users will use to submit tickets. This is help.nurse.gov. When you see this page, you can, um, you know, you can click on the open ticket. That's kind of our general ticket uh, form. Uh, and then we also have open request, which is kind of a, a list of different types of tickets targeted for a specific need. Uh, so on the next slide, we'll talk about some of the request forms. So probably is a good idea. You look at the request form first to see if uh, any of the tickets actually make sense. So like for instance, a storage quota ticket is a pretty common one. Um, so instead of creating the 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 general ticket, uh, you know, the template ticket that is for a catch-all for everything, you go into do storage quota, and then you can actually decide, uh, you know, what file system you want. Uh, you know, fill out the all the details like you know the uh, the space, the inodes, and whatever, um, and then just submit, it and then we'll um, take a look. So. You know, this is probably uh, something I want to emphasize. Um, we we get a lot of user tickets. Uh, it, it, Rebecca mentioned, you know, it's in the order of like you know several thousands of tickets every year, and we want to help you troubleshoot the issue. So the way we we can do that is if you provide as much information as you can, and we've kind of documented some, let's say, guidelines on how you can submit a good ticket. So uh, for instance, if you're submitting a ticket, um, you know, send the error message. If you're submitting a jobs, uh, share the job ID or even your job script. If you're compiling some code, uh, share all the source code 
input output file, um, even the executable. Um, the output of module list is very helpful. That will help us dis, um, troubleshoot what your user environment is and any ways we can reproduce your steps. So if you, if you want to share all the commands that you run, uh, that would really help. Uh, even screenshots are a good way of helping us uh, diagnose a problem. Um, so the, when, you, when, you, when you do that, please keep this in mind before you submit a ticket. Uh, it really depends what kind of ticket you're doing. And, and then that way we can help you as, um, in a quick manner. Okay, next we'll talk about MyNERSC. So MyNERSC is um, basically one, you, like one place where you can find everything about NERSC, um, like the status and um, you know the state of all the NERSC resources. And we'll talk a little bit about it. So on the main page, if you go to my.nurse.gov, on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the system status. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see this navigation uh, uh, where, you, where you can actually look at like, you know, uh, all the jobs, um, the center status, uh, you can even browse files um, that are on your, on your user, uh, on you, in your user account. Uh, you note that you do have to log in for that. Um, so, so some of the things that are useful, let's say your personal uh, disk usage. So it shows you the quota for home and scratch and how much you use. Um, for instance, if you, like you know, Perlmutter has gone down several times. You can just come and look at my.by.nurse.gov on the right-hand side. If you see the state is not degraded or down or uh, some other state other than up, then most likely the system is down. Uh, you can see all the completed jobs um, that you've run. And other things that you can do, so yeah, you have to do si you have to sign in with your username and MFA. Um, MFA, your that's your six-digit token. We also can, uh, if you want to look at the queue backlog, um, you can actually uh, filter by the machine. Um, I think last I checked, uh, we I don't think we have Perlmutter ones in here, but hopefully we'll have it. But like for instance, you can do the Cori KNL. And then you can see a backlog of the queue. So if if you notice like your job is pending in the queue for a long time, just come here and look. And you kind of get an idea of how, how many jobs are in the backlog. Uh, there's also a job script generator. It's a, it's a tool to help uh, kind of generate a batch script. Um, you fill in uh, this form and then it will give you kind of a recommended uh, job script that you can use to then uh, copy it and and then just run it in your um, on your system. Next, we'll talk about how you connect to nurse systems. So first method is SSH. This is the most uh, common way of actually uh, accessing NERSC. Um, so you have to be familiar with the terminal. Um, you need to have a terminal on your laptop. So if you have a Mac, uh, it's already built in. Uh, you can also get iTerm2. For Windows, you may want to actually download something like PuTTY or Mobex term, um, or you can have Linux if you want. Uh, Linux will also have a built-in terminal. Uh, to SSH in, uh, you just do SSH, your username at, in this case, perlmutter-p1.nurse.gov. Um, so that's that's how you access Perlmutter, or Cori is just, um, you know, cori.nurse.gov. Okay. The one thing that you'll know is if you're first time uh, connecting to the system, you'll see this uh, RSA key fingerprint. Just make sure that uh, this matches. It just basically means that your laptop doesn't recognize this um, machine uh, because it's like your first time you logged in. So it sh it, if, if you see that it's different than it should be concerning. Um, when you SSH in, what you'll see is your password plus this one-time password. It's just a prompt that comes. And you're not going to see any character when you type. So when you type your password, uh, let's just say this is your password. Um, and then your one-time password is this one, two, three, four, five, six. 
uh, put them together. Don't put any space into them. Uh, just also make sure that when you're typing, don't have your cap locks on. But that could also cause some weird issues. Um, and when you type, nothing will appear. So just press enter and then it will hopefully get you in if you type correctly. So another thing that you'll see from the SSH is, uh, you know, these options like SSH, um, dash L, your username, and then you see the dash Y. Um, this is for um, allowing X forwarding or what's basically used for GUI programs. If you need to run some, uh, some program and you wanna um, see the, like the tool itself on your screen, uh, you need some kind of like X server um, to, to be able to, uh, to see it on your screen, something like exports on Mac or Sigwin on Windows. Uh, we'll, we'll have a tool that's coming up uh, called No Machine that we'll talk about um, that will help with this. So another thing that you'll notice is uh, SSH proxy. This is a tool to help you avoid having to type your password plus one time password. It's basically a short 24 hour certificate. And you just run it um, once and then you don't have to type your one-time password. Just search the SSH proxy in the docs and then you, you'll see how to get started. Uh, this is just a quick overview of Jupyter. So to access Jupyter is jupyter.nurse.gov. And you have to obviously type your username, password and your one-time password. And then you can select your um, session that you want. Um, and then you can even get a terminal access. So stay tuned for the Jupyter session if you want to learn more. So go back to, um, you know, so if you want to run GUI applications, um, we talked about how you can use like SSH, like dash Y or dash X. Um, GUI applications tend to be, um, you know, require a lot more, let's say, network bandwidth to run things like IDEs, like MATLAB, or like debuggers like DDT. So it's not a good solution when you're going to be doing this on, on nurse system. So we'll talk about no machine. So no machine, uh, well, I guess before we talk about no machine, uh, traditionally the way um, you actually um, view graphical applications is through what's called X protocol. And the way it's set up is, so on the right-hand side is the nurse system and there is an internal network. And you run some GUI application, let's just say MATLAB. Um, it's gonna, on, on your side, you need to have an X server that's on your uh, laptop or whatever. And the X protocol is gonna help kind of display the, the application on your laptop. And this could be very slow because the X server is on the slow internet, which is, limited by your internet speed. So no machine, what it does is it avoids having you to set up an X server. So you don't have to install it. Um, the X server is inside the nurse network and uh, it uses the NX protocol. And you just have to install just the no machine client. And it just kind of gives you a graphical um, desktop. So if you want to set it up, there is a link in the documentation on how you can um, at least download the client. So you can watch this video. Uh, it will get you st um, set up, uh, at least download the client. And then you can also uh, set it up with SSH proxy. Um, when you, so once you download, uh, you'll see this username, password. Um, so, you know, this is the standard way of connecting if you're not using SSH proxy. And oh, just one thing, yeah, just don't save the password because that, that's not good. Next, you'll see create a new, uh, like let's say desktop. And then you on the, and then on the right hand side, this is what you'll see. And then the left hand navigation, um, you can click on it and then you actually get a terminal. Um, and then from here, now you can do whatever you want. Uh, the thing that, that's different is now, if you want to run, let's say some tool like Xterm or whatever, it will show it to you um, on your Gnome machine. And it's going to be much faster. So from here, what you can do is just run MATLAB and then it will just show up in Gnome machine. Okay, um, I'm going to try to wrap up quickly. 
So we'll talk about how you navigate to the nurse homepage. So this is um, nurse.gov. On the left-hand side is the main page. If you wanna look at the events under nurse training, you're gonna see a lot of events and you can click on any of the nurse, uh, I mean, any of the events. So let's say the nurse user training, you're gonna see an agenda and then all the relevant uh, training material will be here. So um, another thing in the nurse.gov is the events calendar. So if you, um, you want to just see uh, an overview uh, of all the events. Um, you can just go on the nurse event calendar and then you will see all the events. And then if you click on it, you will see the link to the Zoom. Um, if you go on the right hand side of the li live status, you can like go into the uh, MOTD, which is the message of the day, and you will see kind of the status of the, uh, the system. Uh, so it's pretty useful if you if if you want if you see the system is down instead of sending us a ticket and reporting it just come here and look that way if it's down you don't have to send us a ticket we already know it uh, under events if you do a schedule system outage you would see all of our outages um, so if, if if you log in on a day and you see our system is down just come here and look and if the date matches then you probably then most likely there is an outage. Uh, for if you go into the four users, you will see the nurse, uh, let's say user group. So that's the, um, you know, the NUG. And then from there, there's also a nurse user Slack that you can also get. So you can see all the monthly webinars and then also all the other relevant details for NUG in, in this page. Um, anything are related to user announcements. So that's, you know, that's what Rebecca sends every Monday. You can go into the news uh, under the news under user announcement, and then you'll see all of the announcements. Uh, next, we'll talk about user documentation. So this is our docs. Uh, so it's docs.nurse.gov. And then there's a lot on the left-hand side is all the navigation tree. So you can kind of navigate through the docs. And I'll kind of briefly talk a little bit about where stuff is. So if you want to know any, a system overview, go in the systems and then you'll see an overview of Perlmutter or Cori. Um, and then from there, you can actually navigate into the tree and then you'll see um, more relevant details about the system, like the architecture and stuff. Uh, this is the storage system. So if you want to know anything about all of our, um, you know, home, home directory or sh a shared file system like, you know, CFS or HPSS, which is our tape archive, um, you can find everything about it here, along with um, backups and quotas and everything else that's relevant. Um, so I talked about the connecting to nurse. So that's under connecting page. Uh, that's where you'll find this along with the no machine or how to set, set up MFA. This is the section for how you run jobs. So this is probably uh, something that you most likely have to refer to. Under running jobs, you may want to look at example jobs. That's where a lot of our example jobs are with job scripts. Uh, the queues is a pretty good place if you want to know all of our queues. And so, so yeah, this is a pretty useful page uh, if you didn't know where this was. Uh, the programming models, this is where, you know, if you want to know anything about like MPI, OpenMP, just come here and you'll find more uh, details on each of our uh, programming models. And that's it, thank you.